I'm talking this morning with uh, Andy Watts of the Carnival Band. Um, we're looking forward to sharing together in a uh, in a concert on the 20th of March. So, Andy, tell us uh, tell us a bit about the um, how the Carnival Band got together and your own background and all that kind of stuff. Well, the Carnival Band's been going for about 25, well, more than 25 years now, more than a quarter of a century, and uh, it... Uh, oh, Richard, you've disappeared all of a sudden. Are you back again? There you go. Um, the Carnival Band got together uh, as the result of uh, Giles Lewin and myself working in a theatre company called the Medieval Players uh, back in the early 1980s, and uh, we were really impressed by the way that the actors uh, played music and sang. It was full of energy and life and fun. Uh, and uh, we thought that we'd like to sort of bring that quality into our music making. So we formed this band uh, called the Carnival Band. Um, Carnival being in medieval times and uh, the 16th century, the time uh, just before Lent when everything went topsy turvy, uh, everything was turned upside down, people had a jolly good time before they started uh, fasting and uh, going without. So the idea was it was fun, energy, lively, and uh, unexpected, and we'd mix everything up, which we do. We'd mix all sorts of different musical styles. So we might go from uh, you know, a song by Henry Purcell to uh, something from Music Hall to uh, a bit of skiffle and rock and roll, um, anything. It's all grist to the mill. Mm. And even 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 what what you might what you might call kind of early music. I, I mean, I'm not a musician, but my impression is that you're not in any sense kind of precious about. You, 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 uh, about the kind of uh, no, no, no we're not pure authenticity, or is, is, yeah. isn't the word I'm looking for? But well, it might be, it might be the word you're looking for. I don't know, but uh, but uh, it, I mean, we're certainly not purist. You know, we do uh, if we're playing medieval music, we might mix in electric guitar and double bass, which of course you know we're not around in the time of the Crusades uh, and. Uh, uh, other way around, if we're doing something um, from the 20th century, we might use medieval shawms uh, in it, which are sort of loud reed instruments, uh, you know, because we don't, you know, which would take the place of a modern trumpet or a saxophone, something like that. Mm. So we just sort of mix it all up. Uh, you know, that's very much the idea. Mm. Uh, and you, your collaborations with um, with Muddy Pryor have been um, have been a significant part of the, the life of the band, haven't they? How, how yes, we that begin. That's right. Yeah, that's been going. That has been going twenty five years now. That's just after we started as the Carnival Band. We were, we were put together by a Radio Two producer uh, to record some Christmas carols for Radio Two, and from that, the whole uh, series of albums, uh, CDs, and then uh, concert tours has uh, arisen. And that, in that, you know, that's been going for. For 25 years and he's still going we just did a um a big tour before christmas last um uh it's uh sort of spread out into doing workshops and uh, getting other people involved uh we had community choirs on our last tour uh so it's it's become a whole uh, project it's just grown uh like topsy as they say <laughs> but um our, our, our concert on, on the 20th of March uh, in, in Wrexham um, doesn't involve uh, doesn't involve Maddie. Who, who, who do we who do we have instead? Ah, well, now for the concert in in Wrexham, uh, which is a, a, another new departure for us, we we're working with a, a, a wonderful uh, singer from the world of early music, period music, called Vivian Ellis. Um, and she uh, is a sort of expert in the sort of ballad repertoire of the 17th and 18th centuries. Uh, she's got a wonderful way of singing uh, and sort of storytelling uh, through song, uh, and we're very much looking forward to working with her. So this is a, a new departure. It's taking us uh, perhaps you know back slightly towards our early music roots, uh, but uh, we're still going to have lots of fun with it. Uh, that's that's going to be sh sure. Uh, uh, and I think what's going to be interesting is we're going to work uh, totally acoustically, or, or pretty well anyway. Uh, it's going to be very stripped down. We're going to uh, do away with big PA. Uh, it's going to be close up and personal. And uh, I think, again, that's you know trying to get back to the way it was in the 17th century, before you had big halls and PA and big sound and video screens and all the rest of it 
but the audience was right up there with the musicians, and that's what we're trying to get uh, out of this concert. Fantastic. Uh, say, say a bit about what attracts you to the kind of 18th century, 19th century hymnody that, that, that will be a, a big feature of the, of the concert. Yeah, well, I think it's a wonderful um, set of tunes, basically. They're wonderful melodies. Um, and it's also a time of um, experimentation. Uh, there were no rules because nobody would really, in the 18th century, nobody would really got to grips with, with hymn writing. It was all quite new. Um, uh, there was this sort of sudden outburst of, of poetry and uh, uh, and music all coming together and uh, it, it, they took their inspiration from all sorts of different sources from the world of theatre uh, and from the pleasure gardens um, as well as from folk music and from the perhaps more uh, serious classical music of Handel. They, they would take from anywhere and, uh, and use it and so you get this fantastic melting pot of, of melodies and tunes uh, many of which are still um, sung today, although they're perhaps not as widely known as they were, in, you know, 40, 50 years ago when everybody you know, knew knew hymns because they all sang them at school. Um, but even so, they're they're really. It would be a shame to lose these wonderful tunes and uh, texts uh, completely. So, you know, we, we're we're very we're very enthusiastic about doing them. What? For those who, who don't know the Carnival Band, uh, there, there might be one or two out there. Um, what would be different um, about hearing and taking part in the band um, singing um, singing a, a, a typical sort of Charles Wesley hymn, and from how you might experience that in a um, you know a, a, a church service on a, on, a, on a Sunday morning? Well, I think one of the things that people would uh, notice immediately was probably the the sort of speed at which we sing and play. Uh, we tend to do things at a slightly faster tempo than uh, they uh, uh, than they get done today, um, and that's because we're looking very much to the uh, to the way that music was played generally in the 18th century. It was kind of lighter and faster and with more energy. And then what happened was that the Victorians came along and they made it rather serious. Mm. Uh, so it all slowed down and got, got rather solemn. Um, and so we're sort of going, going back over the heads of the Victorians and going back to the 18th century. I mean, the 18th century was an amazingly um, rumbustious and exciting period. I mean, there were highwaymen and cut purses and then the prostitutes in Gin Lane and there was public hangings and there were beggars on the streets and there were wars and there were, you know, dismembered soldiers begging in the streets. It was a, it was a rough, dirty, uh, crude uh, type of age and you know this was before Victorian refinement uh, you know they 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 really uh, you know in, they really lived life to the full in the 18th century and I think that comes across hopefully in the way that we play the music it's it's kind of a bit rough and ready perhaps compared with the polished uh, performances of Victorian times but uh, we like it that way excellent so well so do I you don't, you don't, you don't have a, you don't have a, a, a reeded instrument or something kicking about there in the background. You could give us a quick, um, um a, a reeded instrument or, or some such. I, I, well, I can, I can. Let me see what I can get off the shelves. Sorry, I'm not, not wasn't prepared for for this really. Uh Can you see it? Can you see it? All right. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that's fine. That what what is what uh, what is it? Okay, well this uh, is a shawm, ah. uh, and there's the reed at the at the end. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, 
it's got its finger holes and uh, then we've got this sort of flared bell at the end, so very trumpet-like. And this was a typical instrument played by uh, town musicians in the 17th century uh, and, and in earlier times. By the 18th century, it tended to be replaced by the oboe, a mix of that family. But uh, in the 17th century, uh, it was a very sort of typical uh, thing. Uh, let's see if I can play a few notes. Excellent. Brilliant, fantastic. Well, I'd um, I, a thunderous applause and all that. Uh, well, Andy, thank, thanks for that. It's been it's been good talking to you this morning, and um, looking forward to seeing you on the twentieth. I mean, I'm certainly from the uh, one of the things that the the local ministry in Wrexham is excited about is is the fact that this concert is a, a collaboration, a partnership with um, with the pub down the road, the uh, uh, the South Seren, um Seven Stars in uh, in, in Welsh. Um, what t tell us what, what, why um, what's what's the what's the thinking behind behind the doing the concert this way? It comes from the fact that what we notice as soon as we start looking at the hymn tunes is that many of them are actually um, tunes from other uh, other contexts. For example, that little first that I played on the uh, Sean there is a tune that's used for, the, for John Bunyan's words, Who Would True Valor See? But it, the tune itself is a folk tune called A Blacksmith Courted Me. Um, you've got the wonderful Charles Wesley hymn, Love Divine or Love's Excelling. The tune that he imagined uh, that to be sung to was from the theatre music of Henry Purcell, Fairy Style. Um, we've got um, a song that comes from the uh, tradition of uh, shape note singing in the States in the 19th century, and the tune is John Barleycorn. Uh, so you've got this cross fertilization between, uh, between the pub and the church, and we sort of imagine, we like to imagine that the same musicians who played for the church music, because in those days they didn't have organs, they had little bands of musicians, you get the same musicians uh, in the church as played in the pub on the Saturday night and possibly the same people as well in the audience. So they'd all be down the pub, you know, then, and then in the church the next day. So what, we were, what we're trying to do is to give, a, if you like, two sides of the same coin of 17th century and 18th century music making, the, the sort of chapel side and the tavern side, uh, and we see how they go together. Um, and I think what's going to be interesting is the whole way that the, that the uh, context affects that the way that the music is played and sung and the way that the audience reacts as well because we know that you know once everybody gets down the pub uh, they all open up and we're expecting that some of our uh, songs that we get uh, down the down the pub that will have people joining in the choruses and uh, all the rest of it because we'd like people to join in with some of the, the hymns in the chapel as well we might work on that uh, as well get get, get get people uh, get people involved um, but uh, but basically, uh, you know, this is this is a whole sort of spectrum of 18th century life in one evening. Uh, it's one concert, but it's two venues, uh, so you get real good value for money. Really, it's two concerts in one. I think it should be a, a great evening. I think what's going to be fascinating is to see the way that it, it changes from the sort of chapel, which might be slightly formal. You know, everybody sitting in rows, and then everybody going down to say Seren and. Uh, getting round and really close in with the musicians and uh, having a good time down there in the pub. Fantastic. Fantastic.